Sonic Lab TV. Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the Apollo from Universal Audio. This is the quad core version. In case you're wondering what this is, essentially this is taking the brains or the DSP guts of the UAD2 system, which is a shark based DSP accelerator chip that runs all these kind of fancy plugins and uh, beautifully component modeled things from Neve and Roland and uh, Pultec and that kind of stuff and puts it into an audio interface, and combines them together. And what makes this particularly special is you can record through the plugins on here with near zero latency or as near as damn it i think it's quoted at 1.1 milliseconds at 96k so looking at the front panel here you can see this is a quad system that means it's got four of the shark dsp chips it's a beautifully sort of machined uh, aluminium uh, front face uh, to, first two inputs are high z for guitar then this is the the pot that controls the mic or line amps on the first four channels it's digitally controlled and has a really pretty sort of green LED fade on it. Then you've got various uh, channel options, high pass filter, mic line switch. I don't know if you can hear this. There's a little tick there. There's actually relays inside there for switching this. It's not done digitally. A pad, 48 volts, phase switch, and a link for linking the two channels. What you do is you press, if you come to the display here, you press and it switches between the first four mic amps and we've got beautiful metering here as well. I know UAD were very proud of it because there's no bleed between them, so it's ever so clean. Carrying on along, we have a master output and this is the monitor level. This drives the monitor outputs, uh, which you can set up for driving uh, active speakers. And if you push it, it mutes. And again, you've got this lovely fade. And then you've got two independent headphone outputs with their own dedicated level and a really beautiful, massive, chunky power switch that uh, has a satisfying clunk to it. Around the back, we have a four pin XLR power supply. There's a massive chunky power supply that comes with this, so it obviously draws a bit of power. We've got the ADAT ports here. Now there are two sets, but actually there's only eight channels of IO. This is if you're running in SMUX mode, which means you can run at uh, uh, sample rates up and above 48K, 96K, that sort of thing. There's a option slot here which is where the Thunderbolt I.O. will go. Then we've got a, two 800 Firewire ports, an in and a through, SP diff in and out, word clock with termination so you can uh, clock the unit, and we've got monitor outputs which take the left and right output of the control panel mix. This also is fed by the door returns of which there are two. We've got eight line outputs which you can route how you will. So you could drive multiple monitor systems or maybe a sub or any other kind of configuration you want. You've also got eight line inputs and then there's the four tasty mic preamps. Now these are digitally controlled and they have a very high quality because Universal Audio also makes some really nice esoteric mic phone and EQs and that kind of stuff so that all that technology is in here. So the UAD also works at sample rates of up to 192k so it's a very high resolution audio interface as well as the DSP side of things. So let's uh, hook it up to the computer and see what it can do. This is a dual 2.93 gigahertz uh, late 2009 model uh, via the Firewire port. Here it is just hooked up and that means what I can do is I could just use it as I would any other UAD2 device to run accelerated plugins from the UAD range. So all well and good. But now if I look at the software control panel, and here it is. Uh, it's a very simple paradigm. Uh, all the input channels are reflected here, all the analogs and the ADATs and up to the uh, SP diff. Uh, we can resize this window and show various different numbers of views just to kind of, you know, fit it into our workflow and environment. What's really important are these four insert points. And this is where you put the Universal Audio plugins. I can select them from this uh, this drop down menu here and once it's inserted I can then switch it on or off and that then becomes the processing for that channel and uh, we've also got auxiliary setups, uh, headphone mixes, uh, a master fader, left and right, solo and, and mute, that kind of stuff. Then as we come over here we've got the auxiliary channels which allow us to set up sends to things like reverbs. I've got an EMT plate here for instance EMT 140 plate. Um, I could just easily have anything else on here. And then I can also route the output to the monitors or any of the 
other uh, channels that are available as outputs. Just a quick note on those auxiliary channels, they go to hardware outputs on the unit rather than door returns. Uh, it kind of would have made sense maybe to have the option to have both, I suppose, so you could record a dry signal and a wet signal simultaneously. But I guess if you wanted to do that, you would split the mic signal, say, and maybe put it into two simultaneous channels and record both of them, one wet and one dry. We do have the familiar settings for the Universal Audio Control Panel, DSP usage, program usage, memory, and Firewire bus speed. And then it's just the question of the monitor section. For instance, if I want to change the level of the output monitor, I've got uh, control of it here, or as you can see, I'm, I'm twiddling the knob on the hardware unit and it's reflected here. Uh, it's red because it's currently muted. Uh, then finally, we've got the console recall system here, so we can open and save mixes. So this is very much geared towards monitoring the inputs rather than the outputs of your door. In fact, there are only two returns that come back into the console and that you, don't, you can't see those. It's door returns one and two are normaled into the monitor path so you can hear what's playing back from the DAW. I know sound, some sound cards do have these comprehensive matrix mixes which allow you to set up all sorts of things and route things to various in and outs, including the door returns. Uh, the UAD Apollo and the console is not one of those. So let's take a listen to what it sounds like. I've got the Taylor GA8 acoustic guitar, which is a beautiful sounding instrument. But, and I've got the SE Electronics Voodoo VR1 ribbon mic going straight into the back of the Apollo. So let's take a listen to what it sounds like dry. Now you'll have to excuse my guitar playing, I'm not really a guitarist. But to my ears it's got a bit too much bottom end and needs a bit of processing. So let's see how that works. So first of all, put a high pass filter across. Then I've got this uh, lovely Pultec, uh, which I've added a bit of boost at 8K and dropped a bit of the 800, uh, the bit of 100 hertz out, so I'll switch that on. Sounds lovely, uh, and it's really starting to sparkle and really sort of shows off the quality of this instrument. And these mic amps do sound pretty amazing. And, and the other thing is there is absolutely no discernible latency whatsoever, which is uh, very impressive. So let's add a little bit more. I'm gonna bring up uh, an LA-2A and switch that in. I must admit, when I was setting this up and doing the testing, I just got totally lost in it because it makes this sound absolutely beautiful. And um, again, no latency whatsoever. I just cannot hear anything. I was really was trying to think, well, does it? And again, on the human voice, when you're really sensitive to it, just nothing. So now we're gonna add a good old fashioned boss chorus ensemble. <laughs> Again, no latency, real time affecting, and I'm hearing all of this as I wish. And that's, as I said, very impressive. So I've got something set up with some electronic stuff. I was asked what the latency was like, say, with maybe running a bass drum from MIDI and having something in the door. What I've got here is the Casio XWP1 running into a couple of channels, five and six here. I can set the uh, line level of the channels uh, five to eight. I've got it at minus 10 because the Casio is a bit lower. If I just bring it up here, Go back to Repo where I've got the MIDI running on these two tracks. Just a little bit of pattern, I've got the kick drum and the top end all running here. Now, what I wanna do is beef that up a bit. So I'm gonna come into my plugins. I've got an SSL E series. I'm just gonna switch that on. That beefs it up a little bit, very nice. So if I go back to my take, I can switch on the MIDI that I recorded through the plugin playing at the same time. So you can hear a little bit of phasing and movement, but it's not like massive uh, timing variations. And again, very tight because MIDI itself has an intrinsic sort of ebb and flow into it up to 10, 20 milliseconds, which is way more than the Apollo. So back to here, I'm gonna switch off my MIDI now. Take that on there. I've also got a bass line. And a little bit of a top end there that I was running. So I recorded all of this through the plugins into the door and integrating with the MIDI and the audio, I didn't notice any problems with timing or latency again. So once again, proves that uh, the system really does work as advertised. A quick note about mutes and fader levels. If I go to my 
control panel here. You can see I've got a signal coming in. Go to my door, uh, it's on armed track and you can see that's coming in. If I now mute this channel, it's still going through to the door. So basically, it's purely monitor only. The record path is not affected unless you change the actual inserts themselves. The other main feature of the control panel is the insert effects. You can switch between monitor and record. In record mode, the signals are passed through the inserts and recorded into your door. And in monitor mode, they're only monitored. So the dry signal is recorded, but you're monitoring the plugins. It would have been great to do this on an individual channel by channel basis, but I guess I can live with it as is. Now, one of the things that really got me excited when I first heard about the Apollo is, oh, you could actually use it for live processing of inputs in a kind of live uh, performance situation. So I run my laptop into the Apollo and then I just kind of set up various mic inputs, line inputs. If I need more mic inputs, I can just run like an ADAT stage box into it, get maybe up to 18 live inputs into it with live UAD processing with zero latency and then maybe send the outputs into my analog mixer or whatever mixing system. Unfortunately, that's not the case. The only way to route the inputs of the Apollo into the outputs is via your door, which is going to introduce the latency that the round trip through the computer is going to bring into play. What would have been great is if the, so there was some way of just mirroring what the input's doing plus the plugins at the hardware outputs. So as well as using this as a studio system, you could actually then integrate it into your live environment, just passing the channels through into your final mixing desk for front of house and incorporating all that lovely processing. Fortunately, you can do this on up to four channels by using the auxiliary stereo returns and then routing those to their dedicated hardware outputs. And you can have them pan left and right for four discrete or maybe have two stereo pairs, but you can't do it on a channel by channel basis. I'm not going to go through all the individual plugins and, and, and possibilities that you can get, but just take my word for it, they do sound absolutely great. Universal Audio have got a reputation for making good sounding plugins, deservedly so. And I like the fact that you can save all your setup. So if you're recording a vocalist who's very specifically particular about their sound, you can set the whole thing up with the reverb monitoring, whatever, and recall it at a later date, or you know, a small four piece band, or however you want to do it, just brings it straight back up for instant recall. There are a lot of people out there who use UAD processing in their mixes, and with the the advent of the Apollo, it means that they can also move that in terms of real-time processing on input, which I think is a really big deal. Added to the fact you've got these four great sounding mic preamps and just general D2A conversion, which is tip-top audio quality, and you've got something that is going to get a lot of people excited. Uh, the Quad is priced accordingly, you'll see the currencies scroll below, and the Duo is priced also accordingly. Aside from that, there's no actual difference between them. So you're really getting hold of this kind of extremely high quality audio path and processing. I mean, apart from the fact that it doesn't do that real-time processing through to the outputs for live production, I think there's not a lot to complain about the Apollo. I mean, once you buy into the system, you can spend a fortune on plugins. There are lots and lots of different bundles for it, but in my opinion, it's something that kind of got me really excited. And I was listening to it thinking, oh, this does sound lovely. If you haven't got the money, it's something that you could aspire to, but if you have got the money, it's a very tempting package.